Okay, welcome to the ninth and final installment of building the C3DT slash C cantilever printer uh, as seen in Instructables. The link will be below the video for the Instructable. In this video we will be setting up Marlin 2.0 and configure it for this specific printer. Now the actual configuration will be similar in many ways to many of the other consumer 3D printers so this might be helpful even if you're not building the C3D T slash C. Now BuildTech they have actually sponsored me for the first prototype I built for this printer so I really appreciate that so I, I am going to put their logo here. I'm using the BuildTech flex plate. In the previous printer I had the BuildTech flex plate system which is nice because you can add it to any bed. In this case, in this printer, I actually added the magnets myself into the bed and just I had to buy, uh, just buy the, the Biltec flex plate. I'm using the Biltec covering right now. I have another printer with the Biltec system that actually uses PEI. You can buy different types of uh, bed covering if you buy Biltec. So I did want to mention them. So we can basically get into it. What we will do is we will uh, set up all the motion for X, Y, Z. Uh, we're going to configure the end stops. It has a proximity sensor that is not common to most printers. We will set up the extruder, which in this case is an E3D Titan extruder. We will be using this with the following three items of software. We're using the, the Marlin 2.0 software. And you can go to the marlinfw.org and download site and then uh, on there the 2.0 bug fix release. This is the one that I'm actually using on this particular printer. You can download that. The other thing I'm using is the Arduino IDE to set up the software. It's very important that if you download Marlin 2.0 bug fix, you have to download the beta release down here of Arduino. So get the 1.9 beta release for Windows or whatever environment you're on. But that one will actually properly upload to Marlin 2.0. Going with an early release, you get compiler errors that go away with the beta release. And the last piece of software will be Print Run from Pronterface, which is a host that you can run on your PC. Uh, to actually operate your printer through a USB cable. I'm going to download the latest bugfix.zip and I'm going to put that okay so this is going to unzip on my C drive. I already have the Arduino downloaded Arduino PR build 1.9 so I'm going to start that one up. All right, so I'm going to open the sketch for Marlin, and I'm going to pick the one that I just actually downloaded to the C drive. So this is an entirely clean build. All right, so we're going to open Marlin. And really, what we should be configuring in here is the configuration aid and the configuration advanced possibly. But I don't think I'm actually doing anything with the advanced in this particular setup. Okay, we can get right into it. I'm going to just go to the places where changes need to be made to run the C3DT slash C printer. rate. This is important to keep note of because that is what you will use when you connect through to your board through your uh, serial connection with a prompt with a prompt or face something. All right. So the motherboard this is the first change we're going to make. In this case, the KFB 2.0 is closest to it's, it's practically a RAM board, but it has some extra ports on it, and the extra ports are actually covered by the uh, MKS Gen L. I'm going to change this board to the board MKS MPS Gen L board. We are going to give 
looking to grab your definitely your custom name. So this would be C3DT slash C. We have one extruder, uh, the nominal filament diameter. This is default to the 3.0. We will be using 1.75. So you need to change that. And here we go to the temperature setting. So this is what we have to set. We are using the 100K thermistor. We're going to use the number one for our thermistor readings. And we have the temp sensor zero, which is the nozzle. And we have the temp sensor bed because we have the heated bed. We're going to set that one to one as well. Can go further. PID settings, we are going to leave as is right now. Although once the printer is set up, you should redo your PID uh, tuning and come up with the values that are uh, specific to your printer. Thermal protection, hot ends and thermal protection bed, make sure this is on. If you see the videos about printers catching on fire, some of that has to do with uh, some of the uh, cheap brands from China having this disabled. Make sure these settings are on. Safety first. In the X min, the Y min, and the Z min. So we are going to definitely uh, use these. Let's see, the next step here, we are going to the uh, inversions of the end stop. So for the C3DP slash C, I already know that the X, the Y, and the Z all have to be inverted. And that depends on what type of sensor you use. If you have like the micro sensor that is plain and simple, I don't think you have to invert. If you use the MakerBot type of end stop, or in our case, we use the the probe, uh, the approximately probe, I know that these has, have to be set. The stepper drivers, we are using the Plank A4988 drivers. That's by default assumed, so you don't really have to change anything here. It says here, you know, A4988 assumed if you don't specify it. So here we get to steps per unit, and this is the amount of steps you have to make for each of the motors depending on what motor you use. We're using the, the 1.8 degree motors and we have the 16 micro stepping turned on for those motors. So that's for X, Y, and Z. Now for the Z we're using a screw that it, it has its own number of steps. And then for the extruder we're using the Titan extruder. For this printer I know that it is 400 and 480 steps per millimeter for the x 80 steps per millimeter for the y it is 400 steps for the z axis to move up and down and it is uh, 400 steps for the titan extruder to extrude one millimeter of filament the actual acceleration we're going to lower this thousand thousand and travel we can do 1400 the jerk we are going to reduce to stop ghosting by lowering the jerk on the X and the Y, we're going to prevent the immediate acceleration when you turn around a corner. And, and if you do that too fast, you get these like little ripples around the corner. So lowering these values will actually fix some of this. We can leave the Z jerk and the uh, extrusion jerk as is because there's no limitations there as far as this printer is concerned. The Z probe options. We're going to put, this is default set to true already. Uh, Z-min probe uses Z-min end stop. That's like the proximity sensor. Remember when we set up the board, we put the plug into the Z-min end stop plug. We are using a fixed mounted probe. Our, our proximity probe sits above the actual nozzle and it's a fixed mounted probe. So we're going to leave that, or we're going to turn the fixed mounted probe on. This piece is important because at this point here, this defines the relation of where uh, your probe sits in relationship to your nozzle. In the case of our printer, if we look at that, we have the probe is mounted to the left side of the nozzle and it actually is moved a little bit behind the nozzle, though not by much. That's the, the uh, measurements you have to put in. In the case of the C3DT slash C printer, 
The X probe is related to minus 27 millimeters from uh, is left of the hot end and it is four millimeters in front of the actual hot end. And then the Z offset we are going to leave alone because this is something that we have to measure once we actually are testing the printer. What that one basically is measuring is like how far is the Z probe above from the nozzle. And the best way to determine that is to actually uh, set that up with the, you know, the piece of paper testing that you've probably seen or might have seen in other videos. But we'll get to that in a little bit. This part here, inverting the directions of the stepper motors. This, you're going to have to try out yourself, depending on how you wired your motors. Could be that my settings that I'm putting on here are different from yours because you can reverse the plug or if you had reverse the wires you will be going into a different direction. In the case of this particular build I know that we're going to be inverting the direction of the X axis, we're going to be inverting the direction of the Y axis and the Z axis is going to remain false and the extrusion same deal we're going to leave to false but again depending on what type of extruder whether or not you're using gear, this might have to be set to true or false. And our best size is 220 by 220. So we're going to, it's a little bit more than. Uh, the travel limits is something that in our printer we have to be aware of because when the printer actually goes, and I'm going to slowly move this forward, you can actually see, uh, see the hot end is beyond the bed. And the same thing goes for the Y axis when we move the bed all the way back. The hot end is actually out of the confines of the bed. And for this particular printer, it means that the hot end actually is 30 millimeters beyond 0, 0.0 for the X and it is a minus 7 for the Y. You will have to measure this yourself on your printer because it all depends on where you exactly put your end stops and the length of your linear rails. So you have to measure this. Now the Z min we're going to leave alone. Then this automatically uses the parameter of the X and the Y. And the max Z max position is this printer will go up to at least 260 millimeters, which is a bit more than most common uh, Cartesian printers, especially compact ones. So that's kind of an advantage of this printer. We are using bilinear bed leveling. What the auto bed leveling does is it takes measuring points on the bed and where there's deviations, where the bed is lower or higher, it actually uh, stores those values and as it is printing, it's going to correct the print while it is printing for those deviations. The bed is not being leveled at all. The print is being adapted to the inaccuracies or the deviation of height in the bed. And we're not going to really change any of the settings for the bilinear here. We are going to use three points, which actually means that it's going to do three by three. So it measures nine points on the bed. And you know, if you want to get more accurate, you can set this higher. What I kind of like to do, since I'm using uh, the build tech bed and um, between prints you actually remove the bed. I always start my print with an auto bed leveling. So every print that is being performed it is auto bed leveled for that print specifically. We are using Z save holding because right now if you look at the current state of this printer, the proximity sensor is not above the bed. If I were to try to do a Z home at this point, what will happen is it will move the Z axis down and they will never get the trigger that there's a piece of metal. It will actually push the Z axis all the way down. In this case, it's going to start pushing stuff into the bed and possibly just like get to the end of the rail and start uh, skipping there. What Z safe homing does is, in this case, uh, it will not allow you to do a Z homing unless you've homed the X and the Y. At that point, it will know that when you do Z homing, it'll move to the center of the bed, and you know that at the center of the bed there's a metal plate to actually trigger the Z. So that's what this Z safe homing on. You need to turn this on 
without it, you can uh, seriously damage uh, all sorts of components of this printer. All right, so let's put that on. So the one thing that we, there's a couple more things, but we're getting close. We want to turn on the ability to store EEPROM settings. What this allows us to do is after we've actually uploaded this Marlin software to the board, we can change settings through G codes, like for example, the offset of the Z Pro, and we can store those in the EEPROM so that the next time you turn the printer on, it will be reloaded from the EEPROM. I'm going to turn this EEPROM settings on. The last thing that we have to do is we have to select the LCD that we're using. So LCD and SD support. We have an LCD with an SD card reader in there. We're going to do SD support and we're going to select the proper card. So we have to turn on SD support and that will allow us to read from the memory card in the LCD. We will turn on the speaker so that we get beep tones if something uh, happens. We are using the full graphics discount smart controller. This one, wrap wrap discount full graphics smart controller. That is the one that we use. And then that's pretty much it. Now before I upload, one of the things that I did forget to mention is that because we're using the uh, LCD, we need the library associated with that LCD. We can still do that. If you go to Sketch, Include Library, and you go to Manage Libraries, what we need, and we're just going to look at, in this case, I'm going to look at the Install Libraries, but you are going to have to install the uh, U8Glib library, which is needed for the LCD controller. Okay, so that is all the rest to it. Like I said before, we don't have anything in advanced that we need to set. At this point, we can hook up the computer to the printer through a USB port. So we're going to enter the USB port. Now the USB port will actually provide power. And you could upload it. I'm just going to turn the printer on full power and we're going to have to select in here we have to select the board we're using the arduino genuino mega or mega 2560 you have to select the processor which is the 80 mega 2560 which is the, the, the kb board and for the com port we generally It'll pop up when you plug it in, a new port will pop up here, and in this case it is uh, COM8. Uh, so at this point we can upload the firmware. Okay, so now at this point it's been uploaded to the board. Technically now what we can do is the software is on board. We can now switch to prompter face and actually connect to the printer. So this is prompter face. First thing we're going to do is we are going to connect this printer and this is you know good news basically a connected printer is now online we have bugfix 2.0x i want to test a couple of things first before i start moving things around because i don't want to crash into things so i'm going to actually move things around. The first thing I'm going to test is to make sure that the end stops are still working as intended. So I'm going to send a G code of M119 to the board and right now it is giving me X min, Y min, Z min all open meaning they are not currently triggered. I am going to now just physically with my hand push in the X and I'm going to send the M119 again and that shows as triggered so that is good news. I'm going to do the same thing for the Z trigger or sorry the Y trigger and the Y looks triggered too so that's good news too and then lastly we have to test the proximity sensor so I'm just going to use a piece of metal in this case I have a metal file and I'm going to tap it 
and I can see the light come on in the sensor, but let's see if the signal comes through. And Z min equals triggered. All right, so all the end stops work as expected. At this point, I'm going to gently place my different axes to a safe space where I have a couple of millimeters of movement. And I'm going to just simply move these axes. And I'm going to use very small increments. I just want to see if they are moving in the correct direction. I'm going to do the Z. First, I'm going to move it up one millimeter, and we can look at the video. And that moved up one millimeter properly. I'm going to try 10 millimeters now. All right, and that runs, runs properly. I'm going to try the X. I'm going to start with a small increment, 0.1 millimeter. I just want to see if there's some movement coming through. All right, I hear movement. I'm going to try one millimeter. And it seems like that's moving. I can try 10 millimeters. All right, that's good. Uh, what I'm trying here is I'm making sure that uh, the inversion or the inverse of all the axes were properly installed so that when I do a home, the bed or the axis, x axis is not going to move to a direction away from the end stop because we want to have the home move towards the end stop. And then uh, lastly, we're going to try to move the bed. Again, I'm going to use a small increment of 0.1 millimeter. All right, I hear motion. I'm going to do a one millimeter. And when I go plus, the bed comes forward, which is what it's supposed to do. There you go. Okay, so the axes are all moving. The end stops are moving. So at this point, it should be safe to do a full home. And it's not going to home uh, accurately yet because we still have to do the Z offset, but I'm going to press the home now. While I do that, though, I am going to keep my finger on the off button on the printer just in case something goes wrong. But the expected motion now will be that the X and Y axes will home first, and then it should move to the middle of the back and do a homing of the Z axis. So let's see what happens. I'm going to press the homing now. There goes X, Y. All right. Move in the middle of the bed, that's good. And now it's moving towards the bed, so it should sense the bed. And it did that without hitting the bed, so that's good news. At this point, the printer is honed. Z is now considered to be at zero, but if we look, and of course, this is hard to see now with. Basically, right now, the nozzle, even though Z equals zero, is not touching the bed. And that's because we have not set the Z offset. Now, remember in the setup video where I talked about the proximity sensor sensing the bed at a certain distance. And at this point, we also, the sensor is offset from the nozzle, and we have to basically correct for that. The way we do that is with the good old-fashioned paper method, we have to move the z-axis down in small increments right now. Um, the thing though is, is that this is protected because you cannot move the z-axis below zero. So we're going to have to address that. There is a g-code or an m-code to be exact that we can use to turn off that soft end stop. We're going to do M211 S0. And that will now show soft end stops are off, which means that now we can actually exceed the Z minus, uh, which is not the safest. Uh, so that's there for a reason. Now at this point, we can actually uh, start moving the nozzle down to come to the correct distance. And I'm actually going to use the controller here which should work. We're going to motion, then move axes, and we're going to move the, the Z axis, and we're going to move at 0 0.1 millimeter increments. Okay, and then we're going to use a piece of paper to test whether or not the nozzle has met the bed. All right, so we're going to go down, 
I'm at 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 7, 8, 9, 1 millimeter, 1 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4. And here we go. So now at 1.4, the paper is getting slightly jammed between the bed and the nozzle. We now know that the distance between the nozzle or the, the offset that we have to set is uh, minus 1.4 plus we have to add the paper so let's add another uh, 0 0.1 millimeter to that uh, so minus 1.5 millimeters would be the actual true Z alright so that's we're going to move the bed up by 10 millimeters just to put it in safe zone again Okay, and so now at this point we can use the G codes to reset the offset. We're going to set M851, M851, Z minus 1.5. And then we've now set that, it's in memory, but we have to now store it to the EEPROM. So remember in the configuration, Earlier we set the EEPROM ability on, so we're going to do M500, which means that now at this point it's going to store this to the EEPROM. Now it's stored on the machine, and I'm going to use an M501 to actually load the value from. And as we can see now on the screen, we have the Z probe offset now set to Z minus 1.5. At this point, if I do a new Homing. So I'm going to just do, redo the home. X first. Y. Homing now. Okay, and now. It stopped the head at 1.5 millimeter. Uh, and so, technically, if I now type in G0 at 50, I'm going to do this slowly uh, to Z0. And now, at this point, we have the paper somewhat. It was a little bit tighter than before, but let's move it up 0 0.1, which is correct because we added the piece of paper to this. Now we have a proper Z. The next thing we have to do is we have to test our extruder. In our case, we are using the Titan. And what I have done is I've actually inserted um, a little cap here where you can release. I've basically pushed through the filament through here and what I'm going to do is at this point I'm actually going to clip this off at the edge and then I'm going to extrude a certain amount uh, in this case 100 millimeters or 10 centimeters and then I'm going to measure to see exactly how much was extruded. Now remember in the video we actually left the cold extrusion prevention on. So right now, if I try to extrude, it'll tell me on the screen here, cold extrusion prevented. And it does this for a reason, because you do not want to be jamming filament into a cold hot end, because that's going to damage possibly certain things. I'm going to overwrite this cold extrusion with the G-code M302P1. And what this does is it will now allow for cold extrusion. So now I can extrude cold and I'm going to send through 100 millimeters at a speed of 100 millimeter per minute. And so now I click on extrude. And what I'm hoping to see is that at this point there will be um, 100 millimeters coming out. Done. Extruding a hundred millimeters. I'm going to test this, and this actually is 99 
millimeters, not a hundred. So ninety-nine. So what we're going to do is four hundred steps times one hundred divided by ninety-nine is actually 404 steps so we're going to have to adjust the number of steps and we can do this again through M code M92 and then E for the extruder and we're going to set that to 404 now if you want to get really accurate 404.04 .04. And, and we are going to do another M500 and M501 to load the values. And uh, let's see if we can actually see the steps. And so now it is updated to the steps to 404.04. And we're going to try the extrusion again. I'm going to clip at the bottom again. And we're going to again send 100 millimeters through and measure this. And at this point we have exactly 100 millimeters that came out. So we've adjusted the steps to 4 or 4 for this side. At this point, everything really is up and running. Uh, what we can do is we can now add the Bowden tube, which I left out to do this calibration. Actually, I'm going to release the filament so that's not in the way of the Bowden tube. And I'm going to push in the Bowden, and then I'm going to reapply the little back black blue clip that actually stops the Bowden tube, or is supposed to stop the Bowden tube, from coming out when being pushed against. Okay, so we're going to feed the filament again. And I can now say if we push this through, until it says bump at the hot end. So let's go to the hot end right now. Okay, so um, the software is set up. Now we're at a point where we can try to do a first print. Let's see, let's go to, I have a Benchy loader here. I have the settings for the cantilever printer. I want to make sure that for the printer setting, custom G code, I'm doing the homing and actually preheating the nozzle and then I'm doing the homing again. I'm doing a that level check and moving it up a little bit. Uh, I'm doing the Banshee right now, 15% infill. Uh, settings, I'm going to take the slow for now, 40 millimeters per second. Layers, we're going to do 0 0.2, 0 0.2. Uh, perimeters, we're going to use two perimeters, solid layers on the bottom and top. That should probably be 3.3. Three, three. Okay, let's preview this. Okay, let's export the G code. What we'll find is that the first print is we'll have to see if the actual offset is proper, so there is a chance that it's going to extrude too high or too low. And we might have to revisit changing the offset again. All right, I'm going to do a print review. And let's see if we can print from the SD. So this is the very first print with the C3DT slash C printer as seen in instructables. Let's get this. Have this print from SD, 3D Benchy. Let's go to 
currently what it is doing actually we can disconnect this guy here because we're now directly reading from card so the hot end was already at temperature right now it's heating up the bed all right this took three minutes to get to 60 degrees now it will All right, so now it's homing Z. And it's now actually doing a G29, which is a bed leveling measurement. So now it is reading the discrepancies of the bed level. When you get more comfortable with this process, you can also, in the configuration, change the speeds of this measuring. My opinion on this is like if you're doing a two hour print, who cares about, you know, a half a minute or a minute long bet leveling to get the optimal result. Okay, that was the last measurement for that leveling, and now it's going to start the print. And I can already tell that it seems a bit close to the bed. All right, so I am going to stop this. Because I already see that it got way too close to the bed. And the problem here is that we built that print. All right, so we're going to change the offset. Connect the printer. Now we currently have the offset to minus 1.5 MA51Z minus 1. Point, well, I'm going to be a little 1.3, so that should give us a full layer because clearly it's like it was touching the bed at that point, maybe even pushing down the bed. So let's see, M500, M501, 501 I'm going to do a homing again. Okay, so we're going to try to start print again. Let's see if this new offset Fixes things. All right, I definitely see some spacing. Alright, and this is the second try of the very first print with the C3DT slash C3 printer. And now it's depositing a nice first layer. So we're going to let this run and see how the first 3D Banshee, the absolute very first print with the C3DT slash C printer ends up. I just heard the fan from the PSU kick in, so that's good news.
Okay. Just complete it. For the absolute very first print. I'd say not awful. There's some banding going on. So there's going to be some tweaking. This could be due to a number of things that we'll figure out, but um, at this point, I'm going to say that the um, build is a success. Like I said, there's going to have to be some tweaking because there's definitely banding going on, which could be over extrusion, but it could also be something else. I'll have to figure that out. But printer is done. If you like the video, again, if you didn't see it earlier, give me a thumbs up and go help me out on Patreon because all of this stuff is a lot of time and I don't make any money on this and I can certainly use some for my upcoming projects. Thank you and good day.